Okay, so you must be a really big Marvel fan, which is why you're watching this video rather than the last one first, which is DC. And that means you're going to get straight away Ultimate Comics X-Men issue 2. Very good. Marvel did not disappoint this week. Um, and, you know, Nick Spencer, writer of... Um, Morning Glories, which you will see in the next video. Um, he's writing a very, very good story here. He has the whole teenage vibe that he brings from Morning Glories over. He's got the what the hell is going on vibe in a kind of lost TV series kind of way in here. Um, and introducing some great, great storylines um, for the future. You can see this is going to be a great run by Nick Spencer. And with Medina on the art, he just writes these superheroes, um, these mutants and X-Men, and also the baddies, just so animatedly, so fun and entertaining to look at. Um, definitely a pickup. Um, I can only see this really going from strength to strength, so look out for it. it seems like a while since I've um, reviewed this title. I think it's because 2 and 3 basically came out within a week of each other, and then we had to, to wait for a while. But, again, so not disappointed. It's The Punisher issue 4. And we see the fallout from um, his dive beating up um, the, the new vulture from the last issue and his connections with um, all his surrounding cast. Um, the news reporter who basically rescued him and um, brought him back to his um, hideout to um, patch himself up. And then of course you've got the two detectives who um, are looking into into various murders, etc. And it's still being seen as linked to the Punisher. Everything is there linked in with Frank Castle. Um, it's a nice start where you get a kind of overview of the Punisher and his, his kind of life in the army. And she's trying to write this article about him. Um, wondering whether how far she can go with it given what she knows now um, where he's hiding out and she has to have this pretty interesting conversation with her editor in whether this is the right thing to do yes it would make one hell of a story um, but is she doing it for the right reasons and then in the end she ends up writing a completely different article, one that is a lot more personal. Um, it's not about Frank Castle, it's about another one of the characters, but it's just done so well. Um, Greg Rucker is just writing an awesome story here, and Ch I always get this wrong, Ch Chetto's art <laughs> suits this title down to the ground. It's um, it's dark where it should be, it's emotive where it should be, it's just an all-round great comic. Punisher never fails to disappoint. Another writer and another title that has never disappointed, we've got Uncanny X-Force and this is issue 16. And you know what is great about this title is, I'm telling you what, remember he has got balls. You know why? There isn't many titles outside of an event or, you know, a major event that's going on that would dare string a story out till, I mean, we're up to chapter six now of this um, Dark Angel saga. And you know what? Not one issue, not one chapter has been wasted. He has made a saga in the truest sense this is overreaching over not overstretching because he's certainly not overstretching himself but you know you can see the ramifications of this going on and on 
and this is one hell of an issue. Um, try not to spoil it, but you do wonder, is there going to be an Uncanny X-Force left for this title to continue? Um, just a great, great title. Lots of action, lots of, um, lots of humour in it, which is... You know, okay, you've got the whole Deadpool, the whole Phantom X, you know, knocking off each other um, band with their banter. Um, but it's still creepy inside as well. It's still very tense. Uh, and it's another, you know, you knew kind of what was going to happen, but it still comes as a shock at the end. Um, so, yeah. Wait for the trade. Now, if you've not been picking it up, you will have six, seven, eight issues, however long it's going to stretch this out, of just pure storytelling. This was a fantastic, fantastic issue. Um, I'd be interested to see how this ends. The only... It's not a criticism, because I understand that titles will... Um, with the same characters in, will not always act the same. And I'm fine with that. But you have to question Wolverine's persona in this as like a kind of almost war machine, a killing machine um, that is just violence, blood, guts. And then you look at just what happened in Schism where he's not necessarily going down the pacifist route, but he certainly wants to curb this continual fighting, this um, continual bloodshed. But still, I'm happy to see both those Wolverines in the same universe, whether they are at odds with each other or not. I'm finally for Marvel and I'm going to give it the pick of the week yet again because it so, so deserves this. Amazing Spider-Man, it's Spider Island Part 5, Issue 671 and, oh, I tell you what, Marvel, when you make your next Spider-Man film after the one you're doing now, Give it to Dan Slot to write, because this could have been a movie in itself. It has all the, the makings of just the greatest Spider-Man film ever. It really does. The tension that Dan Slot builds up and up throughout, just in this issue alone, is just fantastic. It was one of those titles where, you know, I couldn't get to the page quick, the end of the page quick enough to get onto the next page to find out what's going to happen at the end. Is, oh, no, let me not spoil it, because something that we've been waiting to happen for months and months happens. And it is just, it's exciting. And I'm glad they've done it. So, yeah, again, Ramos on art, just making Spidey look amazing. <laughs> and Mary Jane, right at the start, giving it some Spidey superhero action. I would love it if she got to keep her powers at the end. And the way it's going, the way Dan Slott portrays it in just loving this, uh, this use of the spider powers um, and realising how Peter Parker, Spidey, gets a real kick out of doing this. It suddenly dawns on her. I would just love for her to keep her powers at the end of this and even team up with um, old Peter Parker on some adventures. I can see them getting closer and closer. It'd be nice to see Mary Jane back again instead of that wimpy girl. Don't like her. I'd quite like to see the character oft, but hey, that's me. Excellent title, loving it. And that's it for Marvel. Tune in for the next video, the final video, where everything else I got gets a look.